So uh, thank you guys for coming um, to the officer elections info session for uh, that says fall 2022, but we are uh, recruiting officers for uh, spring 2023. Um, if you guys are here, uh, I hope you guys are interested in applying. Um, during the session, we're going to learn about uh, how the elections are going to work, what positions are available, all that relevant info. Uh, so, okay. So here's the agenda for today. Um, so the first thing is I'm gonna briefly go over some of the club's goals for next semester. Um, these are just like some general goals that I think the club could improve upon. And if you chose to, um, these could be projects that you could contribute toward um, as an incoming officer. So things that you could like take ownership of if you want to have an idea of the kind of like needs the club has right now. Um, important dates. So we're going to talk about some dates that you should save um, if you're applying. Um, officer interviews. We'll talk about what to expect. Uh, open positions. I'll let you guys know. Uh, you know, I think we have like seven positions open right now. I'll let you guys know uh, during the position breakdown uh, what responsibilities and duties are associated with all the open roles. And then at the end, we're going to have a Q&A uh, and you guys can ask me whatever questions you have about the process, about the club, anything. Um, yeah, so if that sounds good, then I'm going to continue. So, so goals for next semester, uh, Cougar CS could work on better connecting students with each other. So trying to build a stronger community uh, for young professionals. We want to boost our social media presence. So, uh, you know, promote better video archiving on YouTube. Uh, you know, a better, uh, more consistent social media presence on uh, Instagram, perhaps even TikTok, you know, if you guys want to be ambitious. Um, events, so, you know, more, um, not necessarily more events because you don't want to get burned out, but, uh, you know, coming up with events that are approachable um, and uh, that allow for young professionals to upskill uh, easily and in a way that builds community. Uh, corporate stuff, so uh, it would be cool if Cougar CS could have a, a more proactive relationship with our corporate sponsors. Uh, we had a few corporate events this semester, uh, but I always think that it's good to try and maintain like a really healthy relationship with our corporate sponsors and get them more involved. So uh, brainstorming ideas on how to do that, that would provide a lot of value to the club. Um, and then uh, relationships with our parent club. So uh, Cougar CS is a chapter of uh, ACM which is the Association for Computing Machinery. Um, and they're our parent club. And we, although we're a chapter of theirs, we don't necessarily engage with them a lot. So I think that it would be really cool if we could engage with them and kind of uh, really solidify our presence, not just in name as a chapter of ACM. Uh, they have a lot of cool opportunities that I feel like we don't take advantage of. So if anyone would be motivated to look into that, I think that would be really cool. So if you have other ideas, goals that are on here, um, other values and things, definitely feel free to bring them to the table. This is definitely not like an exhaustive list of uh, goals. Um, okay, so important dates. So here's a calendar. You might want to take a picture of this. <laughs> um, these dates are going to be elsewhere, but uh, these are just some good things to know. Um, so these blue dates here are when the officer applications open and close. So applications have opened today. Uh, the form is going to be available in a QR code at the end of this presentation and then also uh, in the announcements channel in the Cougar CS Discord. Um, that's going to be through a Google form. And applications close November 17th. So that's when at 11.59 p.m. on the 17th, we will stop accepting forms. Um, we'll be holding non-executive interviews from the 15th to the 22nd. So... Uh, interview scheduling will take place basically that week and that weekend. And then the winter wrap-up event is going to be Cougar CS's final event of the semester. And at that event, we're going to be doing a whole bunch of exciting stuff. We're going to be um, giving out scholarships at the end of the semester, um, recapping the clubs, you know, what we did this semester, and then also announcing all of the winners for uh, the non-executive positions. And people running for executive positions will give a speech at that event. Okay, so officer interviews. These are for uh, non-executive positions. So non-executive officer candidates, 
uh, will schedule an interview within that window that I specified uh, with two or more Cougar CS officers. So we'll send out a Calendly link pretty soon um, and you guys will be able to schedule like a uh, 15 to 30 minute interview uh, with two of our Cougar CS officers. Uh, the interviews are just gonna be casual and formal. Like we just wanna hear about, you know, if you have any ideas for the club, like why you wanna join. Um, if you're applying for multiple positions, we wanna know which ones you prefer. Um, if you have any ideas, all that stuff, uh, you know, don't stress out about it. I think that people might get stressed about the interviews or might get nervous thinking about like getting audited <laughs> um, through like an interaction, but we promise like it's all good. Um, you know, it's really just casual, just like a casual chat. So don't be nervous. Um, yeah, that is the process for um, non-executive positions, I should mention. Um, and the winners for those will be uh, chosen by our current officer team and then announced at the winner wrap-up event. Uh, for executive positions, uh, the process is a little bit different. There's not an interview. You're going to deliver a speech. So uh, at the winter wrap-up, executive officer candidates will give a five-minute speech um, per position that they're running for. This time, there's only one position, so uh, <laughs> one executive seat available. So that would be the only uh, position that people would be running for this time. But uh, you give a five minute speech uh, talking about your platform, you know, why you think you'd be good for the position. Um, and then you follow that up with a three minute Q&A where people can ask you questions about your platform and, you know, any ideas you might have for the position. Um, your speech will be recorded for online viewers. Don't let that intimidate you. <laughs> um, it's just so that when people vote online, uh, you know, people who weren't able to attend the winter wrap up event can uh, see what you're all about um, and see what your platform's about and make an informed decision about who they want to vote for. Um, voting will take place over four days and it'll end on December 2nd. Um, only verified members can vote. We take care of our uh, voting system through Election Buddy and Election Buddy will take your PSID and verify that you're a member before you're allowed to cast a ballot. Um, we do that so that um, we can keep our elections consistent with our constitution, um, which specifies that only members can vote. Um, and the voting will be online. So you won't find out if you got the position until December 2nd. Okay, so with all of that being said, uh, here's the open positions that are available uh, for next semester. So the executive seat that's available is vice president of activities. Um, the six positions that are non-executive that are available are director of corporate relations, uh, director of marketing, director of workshops, director of socials, director of operations, and then director of information security. Um, and I'm gonna go into uh, the roles and responsibilities for each of those positions as follows. All right, so vice president of activities, um, the roles and responsibilities of this position are as follows. Uh, you'll manage the marketing strategy and basically oversee the marketing team. Um, the marketing strategy is basically um, our plan for what we post, where we post it, and when. Um, so that means like in anticipation of events, we usually try to post like one or two times. Um, and then ideally we have like a post event, like a recap post on our socials. We weren't able to do that a lot this semester. So uh, if anyone applying for this position is able to uh, kind of ensure that that would happen, that would bring a lot of value to the club. Um, manage our Google calendar. So uh, during our, so I should actually mention the VP activities coordinates and leads our weekly activities meeting uh, with our activities team. So during the activities meeting, we talk about the events that are coming up for the next like two weeks, uh, perhaps even three weeks, and try to talk through, um, you know, what needs to get delegated, what needs to get planned. Uh, you know, for example, like we're having the keyboard workshop next week, right? Our activities meeting last week was like, what do we need to buy? Uh, do we need to have a member check-in? Who's gonna be there? Who's gonna do this? And you delegate things out and you lead that meeting. So that's usually what um, the weekly responsibilities look like. Uh, during those meetings, you manage the Google Calendar. So when we like decide when an event is gonna be, um, you update our Google Calendar uh, with the event, its location and its time. Uh, that calendar is reflected on our website. So it's important that it's accurate. 
Um, it's also like the source of truth for all of the officers when we're planning our events. So it's really important for that to be kept up to date and accurate. Um, and then manage the activities team task backlog. So that's basically what I was saying earlier about uh, you know, keeping track of who needs to do what, um, when, how, <laughs> um, and you know, just keeping people accountable and making sure those things are done so that events are well accounted for um, and, uh, and successful. So uh, Director of Corporate Relations. So the Director of Corporate Relations is our point of contact for companies. Um, Director of Corporate Relations usually solicits for corporate sponsorships. So that means like being proactive about reaching out to companies that we've had relationships with the past and like trying to keep those relationships alive. Um, sometimes it's kind of difficult when you're handing off um, to new officers to, uh, you know, try and like keep relationships alive from previous semesters. It can get kind of, uh, you know, things can get lost in translation when handing things off. So it's really important to try and be proactive about maintaining those relationships. Um, you're the point of contact for companies when it comes to corporate events. So for example, like our Paycom intro to mobile development workshop or the Deloitte uh, elevator pitch workshop earlier in the semester, uh, you would be the point of contact. You would be emailing the companies, setting up the dates, setting up meetings with the relevant officers, um, you know, figuring out all, the, all those logistics and then providing that information to the activities team when it comes time to discuss that event in a meeting. It would be cool if the director of corporate relations could help streamline our corporate relations workflow. Um, that basically means like try and make the process of coordinating corporate events, uh, you know, repeatable and uh, efficient. So, uh, you know, that the specifics of that might be a lot to get into. And if you have more questions about it, I can definitely answer them during the Q&A portion. But uh, yeah, so those are the responsibilities for director of corporate relations. Director of Marketing. Okay, so Director of Marketing writes our social media captions and writes the captions for uh, the event announcements in our Discord. Uh, the, the Director of Marketing is responsible for posting our event announcements well in advance of our event date. Uh, Director of Marketing is really crucial for ensuring that we have attendance at our events. Um, if our events aren't marketed well, um, it really affects our attendance. So to keep the club healthy and to keep members engaged, it's really important to make sure that members know when our events are happening, right? Uh, so that means that keeping our social media presence alive, uh, keeping the Discord alive in terms of like making sure people know about events. And that means posting event recaps, event promos, um, attending weekly marketing meetings so that uh, you're sure. Okay, so I'll actually get into that in a second. Um, but set and uphold the vision for our social media presence with the input of the marketing team. Let me briefly talk about the weekly marketing meetings. <laughs> uh, so similarly to the way that the activities team has a weekly meeting, the marketing team also has a weekly meeting. And during that meeting, we talk about the events for the next two or three weeks and we plan out the marketing strategy. And you do that with the director of activities. So um, the director of marketing's job is to basically make sure that those things that were planned to be posted do get posted and they're posted on time. Okay, next position I'm going to talk about is director of workshops. Um, this is a really important position. Uh, you're the link between uh, technical workshop hosts and the activities team. So whenever there's an event coming up in the calendar that's a technical workshop, um, it's the director of workshops responsibility to meet with the host of that workshop um, and make sure that the events that are going to be hosted are thought through and prepared with time to spare. So, for example, we had uh, the uh, InfoSec workshop yesterday. Director of workshops meets with the host of that workshop, which is me here. Um, and uh, you know, talks through the event process, like logistically from A to Z, how is this gonna work? Where are you at? Um, keeping the host accountable and then documenting all that information and coming to the weekly activities meeting so that when we need information about that workshop, the director of workshops is like, yeah, so the host is here with this. Um, we're gonna need this and this and make sure that all of that communication, you know, nothing is lost in translation. Um, you're also the guest speaker point of contact. So whenever we have an event where there's a guest speaker, uh, the director of workshops is uh, the primary point of contact for them. Okay, so next position is director of socials. 
Uh, Director of Socials is a fun position. Um, it just started last semester. Uh, the responsibility of the Director of Socials is to plan and execute regular Cougar CS social events um, with the guidance of the activities team. So the Director of Socials will attend those weekly activity meetings um, and uh, basically try and brainstorm and come up with, uh, you know, the different social events that we host to try and build our community. Um, this also can mean planning and executing Cougar CS officer social events. Uh, we weren't really able to do that this last semester, but it'd be really cool if that could happen in this semester, because I think that um, having social events between officers is really important for team building. Um, and uh, another thing that the director of socials can do is lead community building initiatives. And that can mean, you know, casual movie nights, perhaps regularly. Um, or game nights or something, or just like casual things in the server to kind of bring people together. Uh, so very much like the community building aspect of the club, uh, the director of socials can take a lot of ownership of. Um, yeah. I'll, I should mention all of our social events, like the, the movie socials and stuff that was like planned by our director of socials, uh, like in correspondence with the activities team. Okay. So Director of Information Security, uh, you guys already know, <laughs> just kidding. Um, so the responsibility of the Director of Information Security or InfoSec uh, is to lead the InfoSec team. Uh, this last semester, it was me here. Um, the InfoSec team basically has regular capture the flag events. Um, and me here could probably talk a little bit more about this because I actually don't know very much about capture the flag, uh, but you plan and execute regular capture the flag events, which from what I can tell is like a competition. I'll ask me here to fill it in in a minute. Um, you also plan and execute regular technical workshops related to information security. So this last semester we had three workshops. One of them was about Linux. One of them was about uh, virtual machines. And then the other one was about password cracking. Um, obviously, you know, you don't have to have three. Uh, but it, it's really good to um, execute them regularly to kind of, uh, you know, promote education about cybersecurity and advocate for interest in cybersecurity. Um, it also gives, uh, you know, members of Cougar CS who are interested in cybersecurity a way to find a community of people who are also interested in that um, and who want to learn more. Uh, so those are basically the responsibilities. Uh, Mihir, if you're in there, can you talk a tiny bit about the, you know, the responsibilities involved in organizing Capture the Flag events, if you're there? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. So CTFs or Capture the Flags are basically like hacking competitions. Um, and these uh, competitions are organized by a lot of different organizations. Um, like a lot of universities organize them across like the country. And basically what we can do is we can join those competitions as a team. So we can create a team um, with any members from Cougar CS or the InfoSec team. And we can basically compete in this competition over like a weekend or something. And uh, these are super important because they let you showcase the skills that you need um, to, you know, uh, like work in the field, field of cybersecurity. And that's something that uh, that's really important for the director of InfoSec. Right. It kind of sounds like a, the InfoSec equivalent of a hackathon. Basically, um, kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So, uh, so you heard it from the man himself. Um, those are the general responsibilities. Um, yeah, it's recommended that if you apply, you have some knowledge of virtual machines, uh, topical cybersecurity knowledge, but of course, um, even if you don't have those and you're just enthusiastic and willing to learn, we're always, you know, willing to look at your application. Okay, so Director of Operations. Uh, the responsibility of the Director of Operations is to recruit for and lead the operations team. And what the operations team does is that they're responsible for executing uh, event logistic concerns. So that means like, if we're gonna need to have member check-in, uh, the director of operations uh, makes sure either themselves or someone on their team is able to be at that event, uh, you know, 15 minutes early, set up the table, set up the script, and be able to check if people are members or not. Um, that also includes, you know, if a meeting needs to be recorded, 
uh, the director of operations makes sure that event is recorded. They ensure that those logistical concerns are covered. Um, you also attend weekly activities meetings. This is really critical so that when we're planning events and when we're like, OK, is this event going to be members only? Is this event going to need to be recorded? Um, you, we can delegate that to them right there in the meeting. Um, you know, and check with their availability, see if they can make it, see if like one of their team members can make it, uh, et cetera. So that's those are the responsibilities of the director of operations. Really, really important, super important position, really important to do well. OK, uh, um, <clears throat> my question is, since people know that if they got the position on December 2nd, how will that transition work? between the old officers to the new? Right, that's a really good question. So uh, the way the transition is gonna work is that over the course of December, kind of like probably the second week of December, um, the previous officers, we're gonna have like an exit interview with them. And then um, what I've asked all of the officers who are stepping down to do, um, I've asked them all to write a document that specifies how to do their job. <laughs> Um, so that it's kind of like a how-to manual for the next person. And then also traditionally we set up uh, handoff meetings between the previous person and the new person so that you guys can like go over that document, talk about it, you can ask questions. Um, and that's typically how that works. So there's like a handoff meeting and, uh, and then this semester there should be a document that you can reference that will uh, help you kind of get your footing in the position. Okay, let's say we have a similar to the public speaking event where we had three clubs organize one event uh, together. Right. What officer position or if there is any position for that, what what position would that uh, be to like where you communicate with other clubs or right. organizations? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so typically that's actually our VP external affairs, which is not open next semester. Um, our VP is staying on, uh, but also another person who uh, is, can be a point of contact for um, other clubs is the director of socials. So like when we plan socials with other clubs, uh, the director of socials would be in contact with other clubs um, organizing some of that. So that's definitely a position that would get exposed to a lot of uh, you know, communications with other clubs. Um, other than the VP external affairs who deals with like setting up initial contact and like facilitating contact with other clubs and and all that stuff. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, then please ask more questions. No, that's fine. It was good. Thank you. Okay. Um, cool, cool. I definitely encourage you guys to apply and schedule your interviews uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, because what's typically happened in the past is that people procrastinate the application and then they apply at the very end and then all the interviews are in like four days and it's really hard on our officers. Uh, so just, uh, you know, asking humbly <laughs> that uh, if you if you plan to apply um, and you're pretty sure what positions you want to apply to, then uh, definitely just feel free to send in the application. Uh, and don't be stressed about the interview, you know. Um, it's a... Uh, it's all good. Uh, so where can we get the form and where do we submit it? Great, great question. <laughs> so here's the QR code for the form. Uh, you can scan this with your phone if you want. Um, there's a link to the form as well in our Discord server in an announcement we just made. And then right after this, when I'm able to get the recording up, um, I'm going to send out an email to all of the members uh, with all of this information that I just gave you and the link to the application and a link to this recording. Um, so here it is. Apply right now. <laughs> my, my thing was with the goals that you were speaking about. So how does the, the Cougar CS feel about more of bringing in different sciences towards computer science uh, right. organization? Or does it want it purely CS and like things that are relevant to CS specifically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like um, that's something that's been brought up in a lot of previous semesters, like officers run and part of their platform is that they want to expand into other majors. Um, and personally, 
I think that it's good to um, have partnerships with orgs of other majors. This is just like a personal response. I think other people, like, I think the point of my answer actually to that question is that it's subjective. Some officers feel like um, bringing a lot of majors into the loop is a good idea. Um, and some feel that it should be a little more purist. And I'm kind of leaning toward the purist side when it comes to organizing events. I think like collaborative socials can be a good place to kind of expose our members to other disciplines. And I think it's good for our members to be able to network with other engineers of like other kinds. Um, but I think that, you know, if, if that's like a goal that you would want to enforce or a goal that you would want to propose as part of your platform, then I feel like you should definitely mention it. And quite honestly, like democratically, if people agree with you, then that's definitely something that you can do. Um, if that's something that you want to make happen, that is something that is perfectly like within your scope as an officer and you can do it. Uh, I have nothing against it. I just think that when I was leading the club, I didn't really emphasize that very much. Um, yeah, I think that primarily like the purpose of the club is to um, help CS professionals upskill. Um, networking is really important too, but I feel like the upskilling, in my opinion, is like the highest priority. Um, but that's just me. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, are these interviews online or in person? Definitely online. <laughs> Definitely online. <laughs> Especially because some of them can be scheduled during the weekend. So um, not trying to make officers attend in person. <laughs> but, For the um, interviews, you said there's going to be between one to three people main, uh, within that interview process? Um, I Probably one or two. Okay. Probably not three quite honestly. Okay. It's it's like at least two, but usually just two. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Hey, I had a question about um, where the link to schedule the interview yeah. was. I got the link for like the application, but right. where's the interview link? Great question. Uh, we're going to be sending that out uh, really soon uh, before interviews start. So um, definitely sometime early this weekend, we'll send that out. Okay. Uh, we'll send in, um, we'll send the interview scheduling link to everyone who's filled out the form thus far, and then we're going to add it to the form. Okay. And then uh, one other thing, do you, do you know like about how much time commitment the roles would be? Like how many hours a week officers typically work? Right. That's a good question. Um, so I think it depends on the position. Um, for a lot of these, you have to attend weekly meetings, not for director of InfoSec, but director of InfoSec has to host three workshops. He could probably talk more about the time commitment for that position, but like director of operations, socials, workshops, marketing, um, all of them have to attend a weekly meeting that's an hour. So that's one hour. Um, and then at those meetings, they get delegated tasks that have to do with upcoming events. So um, I would estimate that for each one, it might be a little different. Um, Director of Corporate Relations is sending out like emails to companies um, and sometimes having meetings with companies um, that are usually like maybe 30 minutes long. Um, so per event, there could be like two or three meetings. So that could be like an hour. Um, I think that the thing about the time commitment is that a lot of the tasks are like small tasks um, that can be done at um, variable times. Yeah. But uh, if I had to estimate a time commitment for most of the positions except for InfoSec, I would say if you include coming to some events, it could be like three on the high end, maybe five, I'm guessing hours a week it's been a while since I wasn't president so so the time commitment for me is a little bit different but uh but I think five is actually really high estimate that's assuming that you're attending the events that we have um so okay thank you yeah um Mihir what would you say about the time commitment for a director of InfoSec so because um 
it, it was created so just like I think two semesters ago, right? The role, it's yeah. uh, it's pretty variable to be honest. Um, it all depends on what you want to focus on, um, because this the team is still in its early stages, so you have a lot of flexibility as to what you want to focus on. Um, so for example, last semester I focused a lot on building the team and getting a lot of people onboarded. And that took up a lot of time. Um, you know, I was for every single person, I was helping them set up their own VM, um, try hack me, guiding them through some exercises. So that took a lot of time. Um, whereas this semester, I, I was working on Code Red. So that took up a bit of time for me. And so I decided to focus more on workshops. So I, uh, you know, I put together three workshops with my team. And um, that took less time overall than what I had to do last semester, you know, to build up the team. So it really just depends on what you want to focus on next semester if you do decide to run for InfoSec. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there any qualities that you're looking in particular for? The qualities that we're looking for, I mean, uh, the things that we really care about are that officers are responsible, um, responsive, that's really important, um, and enthusiastic about the position. Um, I think that what really matters to us, quite frankly, um, and this is me speaking personally, actually, um, really, really important quality for officers is commitment and follow through. Um, so being able to fulfill your responsibilities uh, throughout the semester and not just at the beginning. Um, so, you know, being able to, uh, you know, commit to something and follow through on that commitment is probably the most important thing um, that we're looking for in incoming officers. Um, and, um, you know, secondarily, like there's some like preferred things for different positions, like for director of marketing, we prefer that if you apply, like you have some proficiency with writing because you have to write our captions. Um, and like with director of corporate relations, we care that you have like good speaking skills so that you can like confidently sell Cougar CS to companies and like pitch Cougar CS to companies uh, competently. Um, but like as a kind of a standard uh, thing that we look for would definitely be follow through um, and enthusiasm, you know, passion for the club and our mission and, you know, actively trying to you know, grow the club and make sure that the resources that we provide to people are um, useful, as valuable as they can be. When I say commitment and follow through, that is really important, but it's also important to like know when you can't commit to something. I think that, uh, you know, commitment and follow through is really important, but in the same vein, it's really important that if you commit to something, um, you know that you can do it. Um, or you're, you're like pretty sure that you can do it. And if you feel unsure that you're able to do something, you should voice that. Um, and definitely not just like commit to something knowing that there's a slim chance that you'll be able to do it um, and then not voice that you'll not be able to do it. And then that action just never gets done. Um, that's something that we want to avoid. If we don't see you all on okay, the ballot, okay. we're going to hack you. <laughs> 